Almost all games have in common an element of unpredictability. That usually comes from two sources, the competition and the uncontrollable. The object of many games, like chess, is to think like your competitor, so you can counter their likely move. Uncontrollables can be described as chance. Board games deliberately include dice, spinners, and drawing cards as chance generators. These introduce several properties well studied by psychologists. Intermittent reinforcement, cognitive dissonance, reliability of repeated measures, weightings, abrupt game changes like trump or mate, levelers, equity, motivational, contaminants like prior skill. I lump this whole analysis under the heading of levelers, adapted from level playing field. We use the term level playing field these days to mean that each participant has the same extrinsic challenges. Their intrinsic challenges will come then from sources like their innate abilities, prior knowledge, effort, and learning. In education, we hope to focus on the latter two. Some things everybody can learn. Other things require effort. It shouldn't be a surprise that calculus is hard for many to learn. It wasn't invented until the 1500s by famous geniuses. We'd already invented pyramids, cathedrals, gunpowder, and sailed around the world by then. So however much we level the playing field, I doubt games will make calculus easy. But maybe that's a bit too much to ask. What if a game could at least make us feel good about ourselves while struggling with a difficult subject? That might be a worthwhile improvement in its own right. So how do we level a playing field? Let's return to the example in the previous module about neurological patients needing exercise. The game I developed was a ball game. These are common enough in schools and rehab centers, but people in wheelchairs can't go chase the ball if they miss their catch. Usually an able-bodied staff hero comes in and picks it up. What if the ball could float? Well, one easy way to give that sensation is to hang it from a high ceiling. So we put a long cord with some elastic on the end. Now, once the ball is set in motion, it keeps going. If I miss, it doesn't drop to the ground or go out of bounds. It passes on to another player. The elastic makes it a bit unpredictable. So hanging the ball is an example of a leveler. My music system similarly employs a number of levelers. The first principle is restricted number of notes. Chords of the song are rewritten, so there is more overlap between chords, fewer notes to choose. Importantly, this means less chance of hitting a wrong note. A beginner can play along with confidence. A second principle is inertia. The open strings of the guitar are like the hanging ball. You strike them once, and they sustain. A ukulele, piano, xylophone, harmonica, or recorder only plays the notes as you strike them no free sounds. So the inertia of the guitar chords is the core of the ensemble. The third principle is controlled predictability. A blues song may only have three to four chords and the same 12 bars, but this allows almost limitless variation. The sequence, however, is predictable and easy for beginners to join in. Commercial games use this method to create an unpredictable element. If you've answered all of the questions in Trivial Pursuit, you still have to roll a pair of dice to go on to the winning square. If you own all the properties in Monopoly, some lucky dude may well just skip around the board and never land on your fancy hotels, while every time you roll the dice, landing on their cheap little slum dumps drains your money. So for homework, review your favorite computer games, board games, and sports for examples of the chance element and leveling their playing field.